Hi and welcome to the show. My name is Sarah Davison and I'm best known as The Divorce Coach, helping you to cope better with any kind of breakup, separation, divorce, or any of those really tricky relationship challenges you might be going through right now. So if you have a question that you'd like me to answer personally for you, then do email me at the show and I'll tell you how to do that so I can answer your question on one of my upcoming episodes. Today, I've got an email from someone who's really struggling to move on. Her name is Cindy and she's in England and she is really struggling. Her ex left her about six months ago. She has a baby who is six months old now. So it was a really tough time. Now I have other people who I know who tune in and watch these videos who are going through breakups either when they're pregnant or just after they've given birth. Obviously your hormones are all over the place and this is a really difficult time to suddenly becoming single and also a single parent at the same time. Now I know it can be super, super daunting and I actually have one of my coaches who's in training with me right now to become a breakup and divorce coach practitioner who went through this her, herself, her name's Holly, and her boyfriend left her when she was pregnant. And one of the things she always says to me is that the, the birth was really difficult because she was really, really worried about how she would manage that on her own. Now, one of the things she managed to do was get a support team around her pretty quick, and that's one of the things I'm gonna recommend here for Cindy, is that she gets a support team of people around her who can support her. Now, this could be a good friend, it could be a family member, it could be somebody that you trust and makes you feel good about yourself, that's important, but you really need to build up your support team because obviously if your partner's not there anymore, you're gonna need that kind of support from somebody else emotionally. So who can you find to step in a little bit into that role? Not obviously full time, but maybe it's two or three people. Maybe you can share and spread out the different things between maybe two or three friends or two or three family members who can step up and be there for you. You know, going through this on your own is gonna to be tough. So get the support in the local community as well. I would go to your local GP, I would find out what support is available for you and tell people so that they can put things in place for you or at least point you in the right direction. Okay, we wanna build up a support team around you so you don't feel isolated and you don't feel alone. Now, Cindy's six months on down that line, her partner is no longer there and she is very, very upset about it. And obviously she can't do that much because she's tied to the house with a small baby. Now, one of the things I would recommend is try and get out a little bit, Cindy. Now, my son now is 10, but one of the things I used to do when he was a baby was take him out to the park. Now, not only was that good for him, it was very good for me too, because actually just getting out and about walking changes your physiology, changes the way your body's moving. You're taking deeper breaths, which is gonna help strengthen your mind because a bit of exercise and a bit of fresh air will make a big difference. So I would really suggest, no matter what the weather's doing, is just get wrapped up and get out there and do something. So maybe go for a walk around the block, go to a park, maybe go to some of these mother and baby groups, because I know I met a load of friends through those who are still really good friends today. In fact, one of my best, best friends, Sue, I met her at a monkey music class with my son when he was only three months old. So it is amazing about how, how you bond very quickly with children. So it's easier in some ways to make friends when you've got a baby because there's an excuse to get talking and it breaks down some of those barriers that maybe you can't overcome if you, do, if you don't have kids. So that's one way to get out and about and start moving. And then you'll find that you start to network and you build new friendships that are important. Also, if you're still in touch with midwives, then it's important to talk to them as well about what you're going through because they will be seeing other people in your situation. Now, whilst I know, I know how isolating it can feel, I know how difficult it can, can feel too. I became a single parent when my son was one. And yeah, it can be very overwhelming trying to figure out how you're going to cope um, with that responsibility. And it, and it is a, a big responsibility, obviously. So networking with those people in your community that can support you, reaching out for help is really important. Don't be afraid to ask for help. There are a lot of people there that are there to help people. And when asked, they are really super happy to get involved and help and support you. And there are services out there to support too. There also might be a local charity who could get involved and help you too. So there are lots of things. I know it can be tough, but actually having a baby is, is a great motivation because you have to get up every morning, probably throughout the night as well, right? So if you have to get up, you have to put one foot in front of the other, you have to keep going because your baby needs you to. So in some ways it's a great motivation. And I found quite often when I was really devastated going through the throes of a really tough breakup, 
actually the fact that I had to get up, I had to get dressed because I had to take my son out and do things actually gave me more of a purpose and made me stronger. So actually it can be a positive thing. So, and also when you're networking, you're out meeting more people, you open more doors, you don't know who you're gonna meet. So be open, smile, get out there and talk to people, be open to talking to people and don't be afraid to ask for help. So I hope that's helped, Cindy, I really do. If you do have a question that you want me to answer for you, then do email me at sarah at saradavison.com. In the subject heading, if you put Sarah TV so I can see that email and I make sure that I include it in one of my upcoming episodes, I will answer it for you, I will get back to you, and I will do my best to help. If you like the channel, if you like the video, please like, please subscribe, and I look forward to seeing you in my next episode. Have a great day, guys. Lots of love. Bye.